this is my friend's 62 Brown Princeton. I really love these amps and I have a couple of them myself. And uh, when he got this amp, the tremolo section had been completely removed and simply replaced with a gain stage off of that half of a tube. And there was a crude master volume set up as well as a crude attempt at tone controls. I say crude because they didn't work very well as controls. The actual quality of the work that was done was fantastic. Um, and so uh, Pete asked me if I could uh, have a look at this amp and figure out what had been done to it and try and get back to stock. So one obvious thing you'll all see is these are orange drops, not the yellow Astrons. I did not have enough yellow Astrons to do the whole amp and I figured I should do it first with the or existing orange drops and of course I have some orange drops myself. So I rebuilt the tremolo section, uh, got the preamp circuit back to stock with the correct tone controls and the person who had done the mods had done a nice job in the sense that um, he had moved around the various pots to get what he wanted but he had not thrown them out. Likewise, wires like this were, cu were not cut. They were rearranged to the connections he wanted, but were folded up in such a way that you could put the amp back to stock. So whoever did the mod actually did a decent job. Unfortunately, I didn't have all the carbon comp resistors to replace everything he did, and the work was fine. So this was originally done by whoever modded the amp, and so on and so forth across the amp. Uh, so whenever I'm doing a restoration of an amp that I don't have all original parts for uh, or that's going to be played um, you know the intention is not to pass it off as original so um, we're going to take advantage of the fact that the amp has been previously worked on to maybe do some subtle things so in this case uh, another positive thing this guy had did was uh, made a double heater line uh, originally these amps had a single heater feed and the heater grounded to the chassis which creates more noise than you would normally expect. He had also put in a hum balance control. Uh, I don't like chassis being drilled but it was there, it was done and it probably reduces noise so we went with it. Uh, so on a, a vintage amp like this uh, there's a couple of subtle things you can do to tweak it. Um, in this case um, we've replaced uh, one tremolo capacitor which was 0.01 with a 0.02 and that uh, slows down the tremolo a little which uh, which is a really positive thing in my book I like slow greasy sounding tremolo and since this is a bias wiggle tremolo they sound really good like that uh, the other thing I did which is a little subtle thing is uh, if you've watched any of my trainer videos uh, this is supposed to be a 0.02 cap uh, I borrowed the 0.02 because I didn't have one in an orange drop, moved it into the tremolo, and I did have a bunch of 0.01s, so this is a 0.01, and my theory on caps is that uh, sometimes you get a great sounding amp, and sometimes that's because the cap has drifted a little in value, and in the case of an amp you're going to play some lead with, A, you probably can't hear the difference point between 0.01 and 0.02 um, sitting playing clean. However, if you overdrive the amp, the bass is going to be a little bit tighter and cleaner, and that's a desirable thing. So it's going to sound vintage and fat, clean, and it's going to sound a, a little more liquidy, if that's the right word, when you're cranking it. So sometimes I do things like that. In this case, it's a 0.101 instead of a 0.02. Uh, the other thing that was uh, key with this amp, or not key, but one thing I wanted to try... Um, normally these amps have a 56k feedback resistor, so the feedback line comes from the speaker jack and injects some of the speaker feedback signal into the preamp. Uh, this is done to cut down gain and make the amp sound better, cleaner. So in this case the amp would have had a 56k resistor, however that was completely missing from the amp. Uh, and so I thought, yeah, I don't have a 56k carbon comp, but uh, Boy, I got a whole bunch of these uh, 100Ks, so uh, twice the value for negative feedback sometimes sounds really good. And these brown Princetons do tend to be a little too clean. And uh, even though it's almost the same circuit, relatively speaking, as a Tweed Deluxe, 
um, or similar idea to a Tweed Deluxe, similar transformer, similar voltage. Uh, it doesn't quite get as grindy as a Tweed Deluxe. This gives you a little more, a little more rock and roll. Even though the amp sound, again, played cleanly, you probably can't tell. Crank it up, you can hear it. And these are the kind of things I like. Uh, the final thing I did to this amp, and this is, uh, this is something I've been experimenting with lately, is you'll notice that there is, there is a capacitor and a resistor strapped across the first gain stage. So we have the in coming from the input jack and then jumping over to the out, going to the out. And this was an idea stolen from Howard Dumble. And uh, on his amps, he has localized negative feedback on the high gain gain stages. And what it is, it's a cap, cap in the Dumble case, it's 0.047. In this case, I've chosen 0 0.001. And an 18 meg resistor, you just make a little solder of them together and then you insert it into the pins and it's completely removable uh, but what it does is it does a very interesting thing where it clarifies the top end a little bit makes it less rizzy and raspy but also gives a unique compression type effect almost like you have a compressor going that really makes your single note lines pop right out and uh, experimented with this for a little while. A friend of mine uh, has a builds. A friend of mine, Rob Fowler, builds amps out in Cambridge, and he's built a whole bunch of Dumble designs. And we've talked and talked and talked. And I'm not into building the Dumble uh, amps. I'm into vintage Fender amps. But you know, every once in a while, you can steal an idea from someone like Dumble and run with it. Uh, that's also where I stole the. 100k negative feedback idea because uh, there are amps like the Hotel Hog and other modified fenders which uh, Howard was doing, Alexander was doing in the last uh, when he couldn't build amps top to bottom he was uh, modifying fenders for people towards the end and he was using tricks like this or techniques like this to uh, to improve the voice of the fender amp uh, so I'm a big fan of this Got it in a few different amps and uh, really makes the amps sing. Let's give it a listen. Thank you. 
uh, full intensity on the trim. I'm going to turn the trim off now. Um. Thank you. 